of Fall 2024 tier list where I go over the most recent anime episodes that I've seen and rate it based on how much I enjoyed it. Sunday is the cutoff, so today's Monday stuff doesn't count. First up, let's talk about uh, Mao 2099. It was good. Perhaps mid. The episode before was actually way better. Because the Graham versus Secretary fight and the Secretary, you know, the English jokes, it's just a personal bias for me. Way better production value and funnier. Most recent episode was the conclusion and we beat Marcus, but him turning into a Digimon that's barely moving... Eh? I don't know. Eh? It's alright. It's just... It's just alright. I'm kind of excited to see what's gonna happen after this because like... This feels like the season finale, but we're only on like episode 7 or some shit. Or a little bit more. There should be one more arc to wrap up the season, so we'll see what's gonna happen with that. Next up, Grieving Souls. Grieving Souls was actually great. Perhaps peak? You know what? I'm gonna give it peak because of me just being shocked at, you know, Sophia Black's identity and the chimera which was wearing a man thong that was pretty funny the like the first initial bit with liz showing up in the fight against the slime i'm like this is kind of abruptly short what's gonna happen with the rest of the episode oh she was actually sophia black in fact the whole prison break thing deep black yo all of that shit was covered up by cry Stri is a terrible person Liz is also a terrible person. Those two sisters are a fucking sociopath. Absolute maniacal, but pretty fun content. I'll actually put that on peak. I'm gonna put that on peak because I've been just like dying to know who the hell is Sophia Black? Why does this other girl look just like Sophia? And then boom, I'm like, oh my God, you fucking trolls. Next up, hmm, Tower of God. Mid, right? Eh. Just set up. Eh. They're kind of hyping up the reunion with Bum. And, you know, the end game of this workshop battle is here, which is the uh, Archimedes, you know, dropping by. And they're going to drop a solution. And Bum is at the end, you know, bottom of the floor. And Thorn and everything is going to melt. And we'll create a living ignition weapon. But it's just... Eh. Eh. Next up. Dan -da -dan. Episode 9. What do we do? It was a new arc. Down down and just goes goes to peak. Down down and just goes to fucking peak. Down down and reason here just always just go to fucking peak because I truly do believe every episode is just that fucking good. Got a new arc. There's a triangle forming. How the hell is Okarun getting over with this? I have no clue. So now we have a believer in UFOs, UAPs, which was Okarun. We have a believer of the supernatural spirit and shit, you know, Momo. And now we have we have Ida, who believes in demons. <laughs> I don't know where we're going with the whole demon plot, but it's interesting that she is just looking for love and her naive innocence, purity, doesn't even understand what the fuck a confession is, tries to kiss Okarun, and that's this isn't even to acknowledge what happened after, which is the whole like Godzilla setup. Like, like domain expansion. We're at school, everyone's separated. Momo has to fight Godzilla. Okarun and, you know, Ida has to fight against the aliens that came back. And Ida releases her new power, which was fucking sick. Peak. Peak. Next up. Let's talk about Villainous. Villainous was... pretty good. Um... It was the return. Because she was locked in and she started to just... Maybe it's great? I mean, old man Will. I mean, did I have more fun watching Villainous or Mao? Probably Villainous. It was a great episode. He, she came back, dripped out, new eye patch because eye transplant. Came back to school, immediately starts shit. Pretty fun. It's just peak sassy villainous stuff that I expected. The return was nice. Next up, Loner. I ain't gonna lie, guys. Like, Loner Isekai is fucking mid right now. I genuinely could care less. No. It's I can't care less about these dungeon explorations and fights. I don't watch this for these stupid fights and farming random monsters. I watch it for the character interactions between different factions and stuff being set up and the implications of what Haruka is doing. It's just 
eh. The nice thing is a skeleton waifu, but it's just like the whole episode I'm like, okay, next floor. Okay, next floor. Oh, a skeleton waifu being cute. Okay. It was, it was, eh. Next up, Ari Furata. It was a good episode. It was a funny episode. <laughs> Would you love me if I turn into a goblin? That's pretty much what it was. And Hajime said yes. Hajime sees through the outward appearance and knows who Yue is. How kind. And then we have a new trial now where Hajime has, you know, returned back to before he was Hajime. No, no, no. I think we kind of got, got past that, right? Yeah, it's all about, you know, discomfort that feels nice, but then being able to overcome it. It was a good episode. It was a good episode. Next up. Let's talk about Danmachi. Danmachi! Most recent episode... Dare I say peak? I think so. The more I think about it, I feel like they should go down here. Ah, I wanna grieve- I wanna give grieving at least one episode of peak. Danmachi! It was such a triumphant episode because we are just on the brink of being broken by being gaslit over and over again. Bell was ready to give up. And what changed everything? Other than, you know, heading, setting stuff behind the scenes so the surveillance is gone and make sure that Bell has the opportunity to go out, we talked to Ice. And Ice mentioned something about the training stuff. Something is lingering, the subconscious, the deep subconscious, due to the relationships that's been strong since the beginning of Danmachi, proves to Bell that, holy shit, we've actually trained before. These skills are proof when fighting heading that I'm not crazy. This is real. That was amazing. Mamma Mia, Lord Rob. Oh my God, bro. Mamma Mia, ex Freya family. Half resigned. She's basically, it, it's like a contract where she can't do anything right now because Freya, I think, told her to do nothing if that day comes. And I think it is that day. Uh, what else? Hermes. Hermes big brain. Hermes Gigabrain, you're in a state where you're constantly getting your memories washed, yet he was able to figure out that he is in the loop and that he's aware now. That shit was mind-blowing. Hermes is always so cool because he usually just kind of like represents himself as kind of cringe and aloof and, you know. But I think it truly takes a person who is so confident in themselves, that has so much aura, to play the fool and not give a fuck about what anyone ever thinks about them. And when it's time to show up, he delivers. That's the kind of character Hermes is. I love him. Freya? Kind of cracking. Freya, ruminating, doubting herself. Uh-oh. Belle is about to accomplish the impossible. We are about to just reverse gaslight. And Hestia, remember. We're going to light our hearth. I don't know how to pronounce it. Hearth? Hearth. H-E-A-R-T-H. Across Oratoria. I don't know what that fucking means, but uh, this is going to eventually just cleanse and purify everyone, I think. Ryu also... <laughs> I don't know where the fuck Ryu went. Yo, Asi's... I, I, they're hiding Ryu for something. She's in the dungeons right now. Freya offered a threesome. <laughs> Ryu said no. Freya said, you can have his baby too, and Ryu said no. Alright, you're going to lock them into the dungeon. I haven't seen Ryu after that. I'm sure there's going to be some prison break moment, and it's going to be great. Also, again, people like Hedin, some of the other people, the Freya Familia, they're really respecting Bell. They know that this is fucked up. Otar, Hedin, the Chuni cringe guy, right? The quadruplet siblings, they're all like, hmm. Wait a minute. Something is off here, so it's looking really good, but unfortunate that we have a break this coming week. It is what it is. Production issues, maybe we can kind of cover a fun, you know, Reddit thread about that. Next up, talk about Blue Lock. Blue Lock was good. This episode wasn't. Eh, Rin's kick. <sighs> Rin's kick. I'll give it up. I think I enjoy Blue Lock more than these two. Maybe even like this. Fucking Blue Lock, dude. I hate putting it up here. Because... Ape Studios. The amount of, like... Lack of effort they're putting into this, just... I, I, I don't want to hype it up. But the story is... 
good enough where I'm enjoying it every episode. It's just a fucked up situation. It's a weird situation with Blue Lock. It's... Yeah, it, I, we've been gaslit. We have been desensitized. We've been conditioned throughout weeks and weeks and weeks. Conditioned to appreciate mid. And now that they're slightly above mid, it's some... It's, it's, it's a fucking... We've been gaslit. This is some Freya shit, bro. Freya has charmed every one of us. 8-Bit Studios has charmed every one of us. We are desensitized to what good anime should be. And because of Stockholm Syndrome and this, this social experiment lasting weeks on weeks, now I think it's fun. I need a detox. Next up, we got Talker. Talker is probably up here or here. Let's think about what happens. My man Noel put his balls in the line. Pinocchio was popping off as usual, right? The fights, I don't really care, but the negotiation, I think is enough for it to go up here. The negotiation with this heart being gripped, because if you deny Pinocchio twice, his condition activates, he can just fucking take your heart. And Tucker, you know, Noel does the yapping and he put his balls in the line and he somehow intimidated, bluffed his way out. And I, I really do enjoy the dialogue, the, you know, the character interactions, the fights or whatever. But whenever Noel starts, you know, doing some giga brain talking and just like intimidates the other party or like gains the respect, it's pretty hype. I'm going to put it up here. And finally, ReZero dropped. That's right. I can't believe Studio White Fox has stopped producing ReZero, guys. It's, uh, I mean, shit. It's not airing anymore, man. I, I gotta drop the show. The season's not even complete. I gotta drop the show. What happened? You know what happened. It's a split core. It's a fucking split core. It goes up here. It goes up here. The final episode may not have been the explosive episode, the conclusion that people wanted. Because, again, we're kind of leaving off in a halfway point, right? It's a split core. Everything was mostly yapping and setting stuff up. And, you know, some people... Well, the majority of the ReZero audience are hardcore enough to appreciate this. But the average audience probably thinks that this shit's just mid, just like episode 1, due to the lack of action. I did appreciate all the talk in the roundtable. Right? Otto is fucking crazy revelation that he does have the Tomb of Wisdom. He is suspicious of Roswell. He just... What is he fucking doing? He, he, he just so sus. Al, just sitting there being more suspicious than anyone. Everyone else just finding matchups. Everything is coming together. Even Priscilla's helping out. And then to conclude it with crashing the wedding, Reinhardt and Subaru. Hero of the old and new shows up. Saves Amelia, and Amelia, she has some good moments. I know that the anime onlys are probably upset that she was more like a damsel in distress due to her just closing her eyes and doing nothing when Regulus was about to pull up. But source material says she was actually ready to just ch -ch -ch, do stuff like that too. And then Subaru, Reinhardt shows up. So the setup is amazing. I'm just worried that the split core will kind of fuck with the attention span right because a lot of people even if it's like a two-month gap they may lose the interest but because of how niche and i still think ReZero is pretty niche i think that even though the, oh excuse me even though there's so much isekais being pumped out i still think it's kind of a niche you know genre compared to let's say dandaran or other really broad appealing shonens where due to the hardcore loyal fan base a two-month gap i don't think is enough to stop them I think that ReZero people are built different, and this will be insignificant in terms of damaging like the momentum. Sure, some average viewers might just drop it, but I have faith that when February comes around, we're going to finish off Arc 5 very strong. And ideally, hopefully, by the end of Arc 5, they give us an announcement that ReZero will be taking a break for like a season or two. Because when February is happening, what is that? That's winter 2025. At the end of winter 2025, what happens? We have spring, summer, fall. We have three seasons left in 2025. If they're actually going to do arc six, as the rumors have stated, 38 episodes, all of season three, meaning, what is it? Eight plus eight is 16, right? 
which is arc 5. Meaning 38 minus 16, we got 22. 22 fucking episodes to do arc 6. Spring, summer, fall. If they could just give that shit there. Oh, oh man. We're going to be fucking eaten all throughout 2025. But this is pretty much it. I kind of want to pick this up again. Just because of Otaku Spirit's video about how Bima's glazing this shit. <laughs> but nah, nah, nah. Let's just chill the fuck out. Wait. We have some new contenders though, right? Because Rama is also being put up here. And same with Spirit Chronicles, right? These are some new shows that we've kind of like put into the... Spirit Chronicles was through the gauntlet. Rama is just a random project that I just did. I low-key want to do this too. I, I, I actually am kind of interested in this, but maybe we hold off. And that's pretty much it. This is this week's fall 2024 tier list of the animes that I personally, you know, enjoyed. And that's pretty much it. I will see you guys next time.